In this lecture, we will talk about the methods which we guys can use for enhancing the look of this ball and bar game. Also, we will be talking about methods which we can make use of for making this game more interactive for the user. For enhancing the appearance of this game, what we can do, we can define a colorful background. Now, how to uh, make the background of this playground colorful? So the first way is to change the background color. At present, as you can see, the background color is white. So what we can do, we can convert this into block based coding first. And then when you will hit this drop down over here, there are several colors you're going to come across. We can choose any color from these which are getting reflected in this cascading menu. So I am going to choose this blue for now. Let's run this game and see what is going to happen. So this is what you're going to come across. So now the background of this game is blue, right? Similarly, if you want to see it yellow, you can select yellow from here. Let's run this game. So that's what you're going to see now. Okay, now let's reset this game. Uh, if you want to pass black color uh, for this background color property, now the black color is not available over here in this list. So what you can do, you can convert it into text based coding and here in place of yellow, you can write down black like this. Let's run this game and check out whether we'll be able to get the required output or not. So as you can see now the background is completely black but we are not able to see the bar right so pass some other value in place of black i am passing pink so now the background is of pink color right so that's how you can change the background color of this playground now what we are doing here we are passing a hardcore value for this background color property here right how about if we can make it change automatically itself so for doing that, what we can do, we can make use of counter variable. Let's reset this game. And I am going to declare a variable over here. So I'm, I'm going to make use of, uh, let's make use of variable x. And let's assign it a value. So where x is equal to zero. So that is a way you can declare a variable and initialize it with a value. Now let's come down. So here we have defined an if loop in which we have mentioned a condition that if the bar will touch the ball, so the velocity y component will become minus five and a random number between one, minus one and one is going to get assigned to this velocity x component, right? Now what we can do, we can write down something like this over here. So every time the ball will touch the bar, the value of x is going to get incremented by 1. Right. Now let's come down and here I am going to define an if loop again. If x is equal to equal to 1. Fine. Then what should happen? I would like to see a yellow background. Right. Similarly, if the value of x is equal to equal to 2 then i would like to see uh, let's say blue background when the value of x is equal to equal to 3 then the background should be of red color and if the value of x is greater than or equal to 4 fine then what should happen the background color should change to brown okay so now what will happen every time the ball will touch this bar the value of x will get incremented initially it is equal to 0 now when the ball will hit this bar for the first time the value of x will become 1 and when the value of x will become 1 automatically the background color of this playground will become yellow 
when it will again hit this bar the value of x will again increment by 1 and it will become 2 and when the value of x will become equal to 2 then the background color will be of blue color similarly when it will become 3 the background will be of red color and when it will become greater than or equal to 4 the background will become brown let's run this game and check out what is the output we are going to get so right now it is yellow but we are not able to see uh, the ball and the bar sprite right why because we have defined these backgrounds after drawing these sprites in order to get rid of this error what we can do we can uh, cut all these if loops from here okay and then we need to come up so just before this draw sprites we need to paste all the if loops which we have defined for checking the value of x let's now run this game and check out what is going to happen so now we are able to see the changes happening the background color is changing and we are able to see the sprites also getting reflected on this beautiful playground right now once the background will become brown it will stop changing right now i would like to see it changing continuously how can we do that so for doing that what we can do we can come down over here so at this point what is happening the value of x is becoming equal to 4 right now inside this if loop we can mention a line of code that when the value of x will reach to 4 value of x will become 0 let me run this app and show you practically what is the output we are going to get now so it has changed to yellow now it has changed to blue now it is red it is pink again that's what you are going to get as an output with these lines of code we have defined in this workspace of game lab right can we define an image kind of thing in the background of this game let's check it out so what I'm going to do, I'm going to reset this game first and let's come on this Google and let's search for an image on Google. Let's search for mountains. So when you'll come on this uh, Google images, you're going to come across some very, very beautiful images. Okay, so we are going to make use of this image, All right? Uh, let's copy this image so for copying this image what we have to do we need to right click on this image and this cascading menu is going to appear now from here we can select this copy image option so we are done with copying this image let's come back on this game lab and here we need to come on this animation workspace now we can make use of this new animation tab let's choose this draw your own option now we can paste the image which we just copied from that Google images. We just have to press Ctrl and V together and you're going to come across this dialog box. Now here you have to hit this next button and automatically whatever image you have copied it is going to get pasted over here on this animation workspace. Now I am going to rename this uh, sprite to to background let's come back on this coding panel and define a code right on the top so I'm going to copy this whole thing from here and I'm putting it over here let's change the name of the variable first so I'm going to make use of this back variable for saving the background we need to replace all the ball where we need to replace everything with back let's uh, convert it into back block based coding now from this drop down over here 
we need to select this background let's hit this run button and see what is going to happen okay so the background is visible to us and why it was moving just because this back dot velocity y component is also there so what we can do we can eliminate this from the workspace okay and let's uh, change these coordinates also to 200 by 200 and here I am going to eliminate this back dot scale also because we don't require to scale down the background right? we want to see it covering the whole playground so that is the reason that back dot scale is also not required let's run this game and see what is going to happen so this is what you're going to see uh, as an output now this uh, image is not covering this whole background so what we can do we can increase this height of this image how to increase the height of this image sprite uh, for doing that we can come on this sprite section and let's make use of this sprite dot height let's select this and put it over here and we need to copy this back and replace this sprite with back and here I am defining 400 over here let's run the game so now this is what you are going to see so that's how you can make the background look more attractive right let's now reset this game now the next thing that I would like to do is every time this ball hits this bar I would like to see this ball changing to some other ball now how can we achieve that thing for doing that what we can do we need to come on this animation workspace we can add some balls to this sprite right now there is only one frame right in this sprite how can we add more frames to this sprite so for doing that we can make use of this add new frame option let's hit this add new frame frame option and see what is going to happen so we are going to come across this beautiful animation library of game lab and here we can visit this sports section and add some beautiful balls so the first ball that i am going to add uh, is let's add this one okay so this is how you can add new frames to a particular sprite let's hit this add new frame again and add this football so i'm done with adding two balls let's add fourth frame i'm selecting this one for now for the fourth frame let's hit this add new frame again and add uh, let's go for this ball okay so i am done with adding four new frames to this particular sprite let's hit this add new button one more time and select uh, this ball now as you can see over here some animation is happening so now when you'll come on this coding panel and you'll run this game this is what you will get to see so the ball is changing right now okay now let's reset this game and come back on this animation workspace if you want to play with the speed with which the balls are changing okay so what you can do you can make use of this slider kind of thing which is given uh, in the bottom of this sprite if you will push this slider towards left side the speed will go down okay and if you will push it towards right side the speed will increase now when you'll come on this coding window and run this game this is what you will get to see okay let's reset this game and come back on this animation workspace i am reducing the speed to let's go back on this coding window so right now uh, you know we are able to see the changes happening over here but the changes are not happening according to the way we want them to happen i would like to see the ball changing to some other ball only when it hits the bar how can we do that so for doing that we need to come down over here 
on that if loop which we have defined for uh, putting a check over this touching part let's convert it back into text based coding now let's come inside this if loop first now we need to come on this sprite section and here you need to search for the next frame block so this is the one let's pick it and drop it over here and let's now replace this sprite with the name of the variable in which we have saved the ball sprite so it is ball right now let's run this game and see what are the changes we are going to get so as you can see now the ball is changing only when it is hitting the bar now the only issue which is left is you know when the player is running the game in the beginning we are not able to control this changing part right for preventing this change from happening which we are able to see right in the beginning of the game what we can do we can come up over here and just after this ball dot velocity y we can define this sprite dot pause block for this ball now this block is going to help us to pause this animation which we are able to see over here fine now when you run this game so you will be able to see that the ball is changing but it is changing only when it is hitting the bar before that it will not change to some other ball now let's come on the final part that is how can we get a score also reflected on this playground how can we do that so for doing that we guys can make use of uh, these blocks which are available over here in the game lab in the drawing part of this toolbox now the first thing that we have to do is we need to declare a variable for uh, keeping a check on the score so I am using this score uh, variable for now let's come down over here in this uh, if loop and here I am going to make use of this code score plus one so every time the bar will hit the ball the score is going to get incremented by one okay now how can we get this score reflected over here on this playground so for doing that what we can do we can make use of this text block let's uh, put it over here right in the bottom and here I am going to change this to score okay so these are the coordinates way of the point where this score is going to get reflected suppose if you want to get the score reflected somewhere over here in the middle so the coordinates of this point are 161 by 139 so we can change this to 161 and this one I am changing to 139 let's run this game and see whether we'll be able to get the required output or not so the score is getting reflected right now over here and it is changing also right now it is one now it has become two so it is uh, you know it is very small we need to increase the font size of this text which is getting reflected over here how can we increase the font size of this score part so that it can be more visible to the user for doing that we can make use of this text size block let's select it and put it over here just before this text score and let's change the text size to 30 now when you will run this game you will be able to see there's a score getting reflected like this can we change the color of the text which is uh, getting reflected as a score over here let's check it out so for changing the color of the text what we can do we can make use of uh, this fill color option let's select it and put it over here so at present it is yellow now the score is getting reflected in yellow color that's how you can reflect the score also on this playground right 
So this is it from my side. Hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Have a great day.